Welcome and happy new year. We made it. It's 2021. I am pleased to be here and I am so grateful that you're here as well. Thank you. It's been a tough year, hasn't it? It's been challenging. That's the new word for me today. Challenges. I'll tell you that story in just a few minutes, but tonight's going to be a great show. This is about getting to know the LWN Live with Nature Foundation, but I'm also going to be talking about my personal story, about how I went uh, homeless and how I ended up living in the woods and uh, being drunk and, and pretty useless. I uh, lost everything, but uh, have come back uh, from all of that. And so I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be talking about last year for the LWN. I'm going to be talking about our, our goals for this year, but I'll tell you where I want to start. I want to start with a uh, comment, a statement from uh, Gautama Buddha. Well, he lived from 543 to 483 BC before Christ, and he apparently is the founder of Buddhism, but he said this. He said, holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. However, you are the only person that gets burned. I find that interesting. And it goes into what we're going to be talking tonight about is gratitude. You know, bad feelings about any particular person, place, situation, uh, it only burns you. Uh, but gratitude, well, that'll eliminate any bad feelings that you might have. I've been working very diligently on gratitude. It's something that I've always done. Uh, when I started to get into a routine of uh, healthy practices in my life, the first thing that I always did and still do to this day is start with gratitude. Start with that prayer before my feet hit the ground. I've said a prayer. Now I have a higher power. My higher power is God. And I believe that Jesus Christ came here to be a role model for me. And he died on the sin, uh, died on the cross for my sins. And that I'm eternal as a result of that, which is so awesome. Now, you don't have to believe in my, my God or my Jesus Christ, because in the end, I know that we talk about the same thing. It could be the universal consciousness. You know, it's got all kinds of names, but a higher power. And that higher power played a huge role in my recovery from being a drunk, uh, doing drugs, uh, and then creating a situation that caused me to become homeless. I have a very special place in my heart for people that are homeless, people that are addicted to drugs, people that suffer from mental health concerns. Uh, so I'm going to try and help them. Uh, let me start by just telling you a little bit about me. I am Stephen Smith. You're watching us here for live from Sarasota, Florida, and we appreciate everybody that's taking time to come and join us. Please st stick with me if you can. Uh, I've got a great message here tonight, and if you're on Facebook or YouTube, please feel free to, you know, share this video out. You can also watch me on uh, live TV. Well, these days, it seems like you can cast any smart TV, whichever program you're watching, so that's pretty cool. But as well, I'm uh, streaming right now to Roku, to Amazon Fire, to Apple and Android TV. And we want to thank those viewers. We want to thank E360 TV, who is the broadcasting network that I'm going through. Thank you very much. It's, it's been a great year. Um, I'll start with talking about me. And then that'll lead up to the foundation and what I'm doing with that. Uh, and I'll go into a little bit of review. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on last year. Last year was a challenge. Um, I do want to start with this. I was talking to my good friend, and I'm just so, so blessed. His name is Steve as well. He happens to live in California. I met him, what is the number? I think like, oh, I'm going to give away my age, but like 46 years ago, 47 years ago in ninth grade. Uh, bottom line is that was in Mission Viejo, California, Southern Cal. I grew up down there on the beach, as a matter of fact. And I met this, this friend, Steve. It was interesting because that friend, initially, he was in my homeroom class. And it was like, wow, I really don't like this guy. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, uh, he's the class clown. He's disruptive, blah, blah, blah. But by the end of that first quarter, we were fast friends. And we're friends to this day, even though a lot of distance has separated us. 
But the fact of the matter is, is that I have learned so much from him. I apply a lot of the wisdom uh, that he had imparted in me. He cares about people as well. His whole thing is to try and help people as well. But uh, one of the things that stuck with me, and I was actually an adult at this point in time. He lived in San Diego, California. And by the way, he's the guy that inspired me to do what I do on a daily basis, which is this refinishing of tubs and tile with this uh, safe and non-toxic porcelain glaze. So uh, I was with him in, in 83, I believe it was, that we started his franchise. And, and then in 06, we started mine, kind of jumping ahead. But the bottom line is he gave me a couple things here gave me some advice about expectations. Well, expectations can definitely set us up for some disappointment. It has for me, and it had for him. And, and so he, he went on to tell me about how, you know, he does, you know, we, and we all do have it like expectations of, of our children, of our spouse or our partner of uh, our job, a lot of stuff, right? Uh, and there needs to be benchmarks. I, I assure you that that is important. You know, we need to be shooting for a certain goal. But the point was, is that he taught me to not be attached to that outcome, okay? So that if it didn't, if, if quote, my expectations weren't met, that I wouldn't let that ruin my day as a result. We can certainly celebrate when we meet those uh, expectations or even exceed them and that is a great thing and so he told me about you know just don't attach yourself to the outcome just you know you can have the expectation but don't take it personal when it doesn't happen well that was good advice one of the things that we talked about then again today was uh, about how uh, another friend of mine said to me this and i'm morphed it to change it to this today he said, there are no problems. There's just issues that we need to resolve. Well, I've changed that in the discussion that I had with my good friend Steve today. I'm changing that to this. I don't have problems. We don't have problems, really. We have challenges that we just need to overcome. We just need to come up with a solution to solve that challenge. And what I've had to learn is I've had to learn that gratitude is super, super important. And to go with that gratitude, I have to have acceptance. Acceptance of every situation, that person, that place, that thing, uh, that experience. And accept it for exactly what it was. Uh, this also plays into that expectation thing, right? Okay, so I accept it even if I didn't like it. It doesn't mean I had to agree with it, but I like I had to accept it for what it was. I have to look for what was the positive message here. And that's what I've tried to do is just become as positive as I possibly can about every experience that I've had. In a real nutshell, you know, I had a great life. I really did. I'm grateful to my parents. We, we lived in Southern California, Orange County, California. I grew up on the beach. It was wonderful. You know, a pretty carefree life. And life was so much different back then. We used to play in the hills and, and do all kinds of great stuff. Ride our bikes around, ride the skateboards. Used to love to go to 7-Eleven to get that Coke Slurpee. That was the big deal. But a carefree life, an enjoyable life. And, and then I went on to be in business. Uh, you know, I followed in my father's footsteps. I, he has really been a huge inspiration in my life. Top-notch executive professional. Uh, learned sales, learned marketing, was involved with him in the healthcare industry for about 15 years. Things were good. Got married, waited till I was like 26 to get married, have three children, but I've been divorced since then. I've had my kids estranged from me. They wouldn't even talk to me. Uh, they felt abandoned when I moved away from them, and I don't blame them. So I had, everybody's got stuff, right? So, but what happened was, is that I, I, I say it like this, well, five o'clock came and well, that's cocktail hour. All right, let's have a drink. You know, it was the normal thing to do. It was a social thing to do in business after the trade show or after the, the hard day at work, we go and have a drink or something, hang out at the bar. 
And I'll say this, moderation is a key factor here. And I'll say additionally, if we have a habit that starts affecting either ourselves or the people around us in a negative manner, then it's time to take a look at that and maybe make a change. Well, I suggest a change. So what happened was is that, you know, I ended up utilizing alcohol and drugs as my coping mechanism to make my day easier, to make it handleable, acceptable. Well, that drinking, you know, led me down a very dark path. I drank successfully for a long time, I think. <laughs> Maybe not. Of course, you can't see the forest for the trees, right? So I thought everything really was fine. I never thought about homelessness. I never thought about the fact that, oh my gosh, I'll be homeless. Or I never thought about a drunk. Oh, that's some skid row dude that's dirty and filthy, laying in the gutter with his bottle of wine. He's a wino. That wasn't me. None of that stuff was me. I never even imagined it. But what I found is this. Because of my decisions to cope with alcohol and drugs and cop out on life and act like everything was good, because I tell you, I wore a mask. Everything was beautiful in my life as far as I was concerned. But the people around me knew that it wasn't. I just didn't know it. It led me to drinking and driving multiple times and get caught. Thank God I got caught, though, okay? Because if I had never gotten caught, particularly I'm referring back to the turning point was in 2010, in September, right here in Sarasota, Florida. Now, I had already gotten a DUI in 2007. So three years earlier, I didn't learn my lesson then, and it wasn't the first time, you know? And it's like, so I didn't learn my lesson to not drink and drive. And by the way, my message certainly is don't drink and drive. There's too many options these days. You can get Uber, you can get Lyft, you can get your friends. The bars will pay for it to get you home, particularly at the holidays. So don't drink and drive. Well, if you want to drink and drive and get caught and go to jail and lose everything, go right ahead. But I'm not going to suggest that. The person that learns from others' mistakes is really way ahead of the game. But I know for myself, I had to make those mistakes. And I don't regret the fact that I did. So what happened was I got arrested in two, September 2010. I went straight to jail. I, I lost my job. I had started the business, this refinishing business in 2006. I was uh, not able to be there for it. By the only the grace of God did my sister and my brother step in and take over where I left off because I'm in jail. And I was in jail that round for three months till I got out. I had to go back and do more time after they, they convicted me, I assure you. And I still am dealing with some of the repercussions over 10 years later from that drinking and driving incident. But it changed me for life in a better way. Because what happened was, is that when I walked out of jail, I no longer had the business that I'd started. I no longer had virtually any personal uh, possessions, pretty much just had the clothes in my back. And at that point, my parents had, and sister and brother, they'd had enough. It was over. They had done. Done, tired, sick and tired of trying to help me. And I kept on making the same mistakes over and over and over, expecting some different result. Well, I don't blame them. So needless to say, I was homeless. I ended up living in the woods. I was better off than a lot. I had a, a tent. I got a tent and, and, and I had a campsite. That was, that was a good thing, right? But I didn't have running water. I had to hide, you know, when it rained. I can remember being in that tent one time because in Florida we have tropical storms, right? So I went through four of them out there. Uh, what happened was is that it rained all day long for four days straight. When I opened the door of the tent, which ultimately I burned off not paying attention one day, <laughs> so I didn't even have a door to the tent. Yeah. But the point was, it was a river in front of that tent. There was That tent was half full of water. I tell you, I lived in some pretty interesting situations. It humbled me 
And I was having to figure out every day, okay, I need to get water. I need to get some food. I need to get a job. Well, when you're homeless, that's really super tough because you don't have an address. Well, my address is Beneva in the woods. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. Wow. Um, but yeah, I was front row. But there was a whole community. Needless to say, I made a decision. I did. I, 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 well, I'd always had God in my life. I had. As a matter of fact, I'd been doing uh, AA since 93. So I had been in hundreds, if not a thousand meetings. I knew some of the tools. I'd been through recovery. At that point in 2010, I'd already been through recovery like three times. So it's like, holy cow, when are you going to learn your lesson, Stephen? So I decided at that point, finally, that I wanted to change for me. Because in the past, I had tried to change for others. I had tried to change for my mom, for my dad, for my kids, for my brother, for my sister, for my friends. Well, that wasn't going to do it. And on my own initiative, I was never going to make it. Never, never. I said a thousand times, I'll never take a drink again. And the next day I'd have a drink. It didn't work. It didn't work until I finally decided to do it for myself. And then I worked through the 12 steps of the Alcoholics Anonymous. And it's, it's, it's a way of life. And it really doesn't even matter what we're dealing with, whether it's alcohol or whatever we're doing that's an unhealthy habit or just unhappiness, even being depressed or having anxiety. You can apply these steps to your life and make your life wonderful if you follow it and you do it for yourself. Certainly what I had to do was this, to forgive myself. I had to forgive myself for the mistakes that I've made. We can all make mistakes. Some are more serious than other mistakes. So that's every time we fall or have failure, though, what I've learned is, is that that was one step closer to success. So I made this decision. I, of course, at that point, turned my will and my life over the care of God as I understood him. I recognized that my life was unmanageable, that I was clearly not doing a good job at this, that I needed God's help to get over this. And then I've worked through the steps and, and gone over the things that I've done wrong, made the amends where I can, Try to make up for the, the, the things that I'd done wrong. But uh, in the end, I came to a spiritual awakening that freed me from my addiction. Freed me. I do not obsess about drinking anymore. I don't use drugs or alcohol and haven't for years. And I'm grateful, so grateful for the fact that I don't. My life has gotten so good. I made this decision. I'm going to be an asset to the community. This is back in 2011. I say, okay, I'm going to be an asset to the community. I'm going to, quote, fly above the wire because I had a choice. Do I stay homeless? Adopt that as a lifestyle. Never pay taxes again in my life. Never be functional in a regular job. All of that stuff that goes with it. Never have a running water necessarily or whatever. Uh, or a roof over my head. Or do I step back into society? Well, I decided to step back into society. And it's been a long journey. And it's not been an easy journey. But what evolved was this. I came to the point where I started doing Facebook videos about three years ago now. And, I, I, and I'm still doing them. I'm taking a break on the Sunrise Daybreakers tribe. That was the, the, the initial one that, that got me going, though, to do regular consistent videos on Facebook. And right now, I want to thank Facebook. I want to thank Facebook because, you know, without them, I wouldn't have been doing what I'm doing. I wouldn't have met the wonderful people that I have gotten to know and the friendships that I've been able to make. <laughs> and so I am so grateful to Facebook for that. Thank you, Facebook. So morning day, uh, sunrise daybreakers, what we do is we, we connect to nature. We connect to source. We connect to the community at sunrise. And it's a great way to start a day. It became 
part of my regular routine. What I had to do was to, to adopt a healthy routine. And that routine consists of these things. The first thing, like I said earlier, is I get up and I say a prayer of gratitude to God. I say, thank you for me being alive, Lord. Thank you so very much for the fact that I'm alive. I'm here. I'm, I'm with us now today. Above ground. Thank you for yesterday. Thank you for the things I'm about to experience today. Help and guide me to make the good choices, to be able to honor and glorify you in everything that I do, to be able to meet people and make a positive impact in their life. And then I listen to spiritual or motivational or inspirational videos, the very next thing. And it's really critical timing-wise here because it's a pretty much a proven fact that when you're first waking up, I believe it's the theta stage, you're going through that uh, um, dream state to consciousness. And in the theta stage, that's when our brains are most receptive to the information that we put in as well as just before we go to bed. So those are two prime times. I think the morning is the best. And so I started getting up very early, three, four o'clock, and I still do this to this day. I do that because it's a quiet time. I listen to those spiritual videos, and then I start working on some other stuff and take care of the other tasks as I build my way towards uh, going out and doing my day job. I do my day job. and and what what happens is is that then I come home and I'm able to do these videos here or not a video. This is a live broadcast. This is a TV broadcast. So that's what evolved. And, and so I decided that I wanted to give back. That was all part of this big plan, right? I, I wrote out a very comp and I have it, a very comprehensive program and plan. Because when we have a thought, everything Starts with a thought. And I, I had to literally reprogram my thinking. I had to let go of all the bad stuff, forgive myself of the things I'd done wrong, implement a healthy routine. And when I did that, my life started to change. I also used affirmation, positive affirmations. I do a guided meditation on that sunrise daybreaker. So that morphed into deciding I wanted this foundation, the foundation LWN Live with Nature Foundation that, uh, by the way, today is an anniversary one year. I can't even believe it's hard to believe one year. All right. So we're into it for a year. And it evolved into these TV shows that I have going to Roku and Facebook and my website. Um, it's a platform for positive transformational change. I've been blessed because I've been uh, gotten to know so many positive people. I've got the town hall meeting, just like tonight, town hall get to know. Well, I've had, I don't have the exact number because it's not even important of the exact number, but well over 50 guests, 50 influential people from around the world come on this show. I just today got confirmation of more super influential people that come onto the show to share their story about how they got successful and how they're making a positive impact in community. And so that we can learn from that. And I get to learn from that. And, and you can learn from that. Uh, since we're talking about it, I'll go straight there. I've got great guests coming up. I've been working with on for, to have Don Green. He's the CEO of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. If you read Think and Grow Rich, you know what I'm talking about. It's about thinking. It's about applying the law of attraction to your life and, and your intentions and, and becoming successful and applying this. Well, it, it's a spiritually based concept, I promise. It, you, people call it karma. What you give, you get. What we think we are. And so I had to work on that thinking. So I've got Don Green, the you know, CEO of Napoleon Hill Foundation. I've been working on that to bring him on the show for a long time. We're getting closer to having that happen. I've got people like Hollyanna Melier. She uh, is making such a positive impact in the community. She's got 2,500 schools that will be watching E360 TV in her program because she has a third year uh, contest. This is the third year, excuse me, that she's doing this contest for, for school kids and they draw a picture and this year it's about space and drawing, she's into space. I'm gonna have her on. She has involved kids in becoming creative. 
drawing. It's awesome. I can't wait to get her story out there. Ben Gay the Third is coming on the show. That's going to be on the 11th. By the way, uh, Holly Anna will be here on Friday, next Friday, uh, on the 8th. Ben Gay the Third, one of the most influential business uh, training professionals there are in the world. This guy's really something. He is going to teach us about being successful in business. Cannot wait. Blessed by all of these guests. All the guests I've ever had, I'm just blessed by. Dr. Cynthia Clark, local homeopath. Guy Berlando, talking about our spirit. He's an author. He's also a veteran. He's going to be sharing with us as well. Gary Oberrunner just released a book on Hackable. And huge, huge Shemaine Nugent, Ted Nugent's wife, responded to me this morning. If you know, if you let know rock and roll, you know Ted Nugent. Well, this is his wife, Shemaine. She is an inspirational speaker. She is a motivational, spiritual leader and a top influencer. She's going to be on our show as well. We're just firming up on the timing. So I'm, I'm super blessed. So last year, I took this foundation from, from nothing, basically. I have four TV shows now, four different shows. We've got, well, four different times, excuse me. We've got mornings, sunrise, daybreakers, tribe, 7 a.m. Mondays. I'm going to start doing that. I took a break on that because I was working on so, much, uh, uh, so many other projects. And so I'll be starting back up, and I'm starting back up, as a matter of fact, on Tuesday mornings. Sunrise, daybreakers about uh, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join me. We'll, we'll welcome in a brand new day. We'll make that connection to nature because na nature really was the a key ingredient in me connecting to the oneness of the universe well, and the creator of all things, whom I call God. And I love being outdoors. I mentioned earlier I was homeless. I love being outdoors, but I and I love camping, but I just chose not to have that as my lifestyle. I'd rather go camping and come home, you know. I don't mind roughing it and getting dirty and sitting around the fire doing marshmallows and stuff like that. S'mores, you bet. That's that's totally cool. Um, going fishing, love fishing, you know. I, I, I just suggest these are one of the, some of the things that you can do, too. Go take a walk if you haven't been out. We've been cooped up. So many people have this last year. Even with respect to the fact that, that we had to deal with a pandemic. We had to stay home. We couldn't go anywhere. Couldn't do anything. People lost their jobs. Uh, divorces uh, are up. Murders up. Uh, Check-in at uh, crisis centers are, are up. Drug abuse is up. Some bad stuff has happened. But you know what? We've also learned some great uh, hygiene habits. We've also learned to adapt, hopefully, to a new world, a virtual world in a lot of ways. People are able to work from their homes. Or maybe now uh, have an opportunity to do something they've always wanted to do but never took the time to do it, to, to, to build relationships. And I can tell you that when you get yourself on the right track of, of deciding that you, you want a, a higher quality of life or you want to just simply enjoy your everyday life, you can do it. It takes that healthy routine. So that's what the LWN uh, Live with Nature Foundation is going to be doing this year. Our focus, we did a lot of things. So I said, we started at nothing. I took, I said to step into my fear and create a new page instead of my Stephen Smith SRQ. I had to create the LWN Foundation Facebook page and I was scared to death to go on and not potentially have any viewers. It's like, Okay, well, today we've got over 960 followers. You know, I've got a lot of friends on my personal page. 960 followers. Thank you, every one, single one of you that are following the LWN Foundation. Thank you for all of those at, that have gone to our website, the LW, or it's www.lwnfoundation.org and taking a look. I, I've written posts. I've done press releases. I've had great guests. We've got video on up there. We've got a store. We're working on that store right now. You can help out and, and help out the survivors of human trafficking by going to the store. It goes to the rise of the butterfly. We need to put an end to homelessness. We need to put an end to uh, addiction. We can. 
We're going to put a dent in it. So our focus this year is recovery. Recovery from whatever might be coming our way, whatever we're experiencing, whether it's emotional uh, trauma, whether it's depression, or we're going to cover a lot of stuff, depression, anxiety, mental health concerns, addiction, to alcohol, to drugs, it doesn't matter what the addiction, gambling, shopping, spending too much money, you name it. I've come, I've got uh, gathered professionals. I've got two brand new Facebook pages we're about to be launching very soon. Uh, I've got a, it's going to be a membership group for those that, uh, it's going to be a very affordable way for people to be able to get professional advice on a one-on-one -on -one safe environment. It's called Recovery 2.0. Recovery 2.0 group. It's going to be great. So watch for stuff coming for that. I've also got the Facebook page, which is going to be uh, the Recovery uh, 2.0 Club. And that'll be the main public page. Um, so I'm really excited about that. That's just really super exciting because what the whole concept there is very low cost opportunity to be able to get to professionals. Uh, we're going to be working through uh, steps. We're going to be helping people to uh, learn how to cope with their experiences that might have traumatized them. To be able to obtain a level of life that they can be proud of and that they can enjoy. The big plan, which I've been talking about for years, is, in fact, getting property. I plan to get property this year right here in, in Sarasota, Florida, Sarasota, Manatee. Somewhere here, we're going to get an old hotel or we'll build it. Build it and they will come. We're going to have the transformational center. It's going to be called a new life transformational center. We already have the referral center, by the way, if you didn't know that, a new life referral center. We're going to help. If you want some help, you can come and ask us about that. I've built this list of referrals of people from uh, counseling, from addiction um, recovery. You, you just name it. Uh, clothing, food, housing. Just about anything that somebody could need when they're down on their luck and they're in a bad situation. I'm going to try and be there to help them. So this transformational center, we will build it if that's what it takes. I'm going to raise the money and put my own money into this to make this happen so that we have a place for people to transition so that they don't have to be homeless. People can come out of uh, 28 days or even longer programs, 28 days or crisis uh, centers or the Salvation Army programs. And at the end of it, they've got nowhere to go. They're homeless. And when you're homeless, you're going to end up having to probably maybe do some things that you wish you didn't have to do. So I'm going to have a place where they can go and they can get the life skill trainings. They can get the counseling. They can get the medical. They can have a place to live. They can have a place to eat. They can have a roof over their head and help the, and an address. And they can get a, we'll help them get a job and we'll help them transition. And then at the end, get them into housing on their own. It's a grand plan. It's a huge plan, but it's something that I'm dedicated to achieve. I will make this happen. And it's going to be the leading, uh, I think it's going to be the leading holistic uh, care center in the country. I plan to take it to other cities. Because we're not going to just treat one thing. We're going to treat the whole person. And we'll have all of the services that a person would require. If it's all the way down to learning how to, how to balance a checkbook, whatever it takes. We're going to be have it all so that we can teach people. So my point, I guess, is this. I, I came from straight homelessness 10 years ago. I have a foundation now. I'm helping people. That's my purpose. I am, as Evan Carmichael says, built to serve. I know that uh, the Lord wants me to help those that need a hand up. It's my job. It's why I'm here. I had to go through a lot of painful experiences and then stop feeling sorry for myself and draw strength from those issues, challenges, to become who I am today. 
which is responsible, which is, you know, adopted a healthy routine. Holding down my job, doing the best I can every single day, enjoying and loving life. And there's like three things that I think that are the most important factors that I want to share with you about how it was done. It was finding a higher power. It was adopting a healthy routine. And it was about gratitude. When I have gratitude for everything that I experience, my life has gotten better. You have to back that up with a big plan of action, right? It takes a plan of action. We can think about stuff. Thoughts have energy. They do. But we have to actually do something about it. Thinking about it won't always just make it happen. And then we have to have our eyes open and, and an open mind because sometimes when these opportunities come back to us from the intention that we said, like, let's just, I'm going to give you a personal example. So I mentioned earlier that I was literally estranged from my children. They did not like me. And I don't blame them. <laughs> you know, I, I certainly became a pretty poor role model for them. And then I wasn't there for them when they were growing up. So they didn't have me as even a drunk role model. Uh, needless to say, one of my intentions was to rebuild the relationships that I have with my kids. So uh, because I put that out there and I repeat it regularly, I now have a relationship with my daughter, with my two sons, and we're working on rebuilding those relationships. The point is anything and it tells us this in the Bible, is possible in God's world. It takes action. It takes, it takes a lot of work on our behalf. It does. It takes determination. It takes dedication. It takes consistency. And it also takes visualization of that goal, believing that it's already achieved and that it's already there and it's happened. For these things to start manifesting in our life and it the key visualization is a key and it all started with the gratitude all started with the gratitude it literally has makes it creates a chemical change in our bodies when we start th saying gratitude now i've been working um with a, a great mentor uh, one of actually i have several mentors which is really great and accountability partners but i've been working on this book right here the magic. The magic is all about gratitude. It's a wonderful book because the more grateful we are, the more good things will come back to us. It's so awesome. So I'm working through this book. It's really awesome. Of course, you know, we've got Don Green coming up, Think and Grow Rich. I tell you, that's it's a way of life here. So we're going to be doing a lot of great things. You know, we had a good year. I had my ups and downs. I sure did. Uh, but today I can say, hey, look, I've got a couple of sponsors. We're going to go to their uh, commercial right now. I, I want to thank our sponsors. I want to thank uh, Total Coatings right here in Sarasota, Florida, as well as Cool Today. You know, Cool Today is the largest plumbing, electrical, and air conditioning and heating company on the west coast of Florida. Get the best from today. They can take care of all of those needs for you. We certainly appreciate them and their support. I'm just going to go quickly here. Come stick with us. We'll be right back in just one moment. Uh, and uh, we'll carry, carry forward here. Here we go. We let our bathtub go too long. It had rust in it. It had deep pitting in it. There were chips. I quite frankly thought it was unrepairable. Total Coatings is a family owned and operated bathtub and shower refinishing company. We've been around since 2006, but we use a exclusive non-toxic porcelain coating that was developed over 60 years ago by a franchise in California. So the product is very well established. We refinish bathtubs, showers, wall tile, uh, countertops, and even sinks. Customers want to know what makes our product different, and that's, of course, the exclusive non-toxic porcelain. We also don't acid etch the surface, so you don't have to leave your home because of noxious fumes. 
I was completely and utterly shocked. It looked like a brand new bathtub. I would recommend total coatings to anybody. So if you'd like your bathtub or tile or countertop or sink fixed with a non-toxic porcelain glaze, Total Coatings can help with that. We certainly appreciate them. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. You know, that's our family business here. I started that in 06. Lost it, of course, when I went homeless. <laughs> Don't own it today. <laughs> I work for it, but that's okay. You see, so I'm grateful for the fact that I still actually can work for the, the business that I started. But I started a new business, and that is the LWN Live with Nature Foundation. That truly is my purpose. My purpose is to serve the community and to help others. I see a ton of comments, and I really want to appreciate you for putting those comments in. And, and please remember to share this out. Uh, I also want to remind you that you can get the best from today. Uh, with Cool Today, they can take care of your plumbing needs as well as your electrical and your air conditioning and heating needs. Anywhere from Tampa all the way down to Naples, give them a call. They'd be happy to help you. It's a great company. They're family-oriented. Customer satisfaction is super important to them. That's the kind of people I love uh, associating and affiliating myself with. So we definitely want to thank Cool Today. We appreciate that. Um, now. I mentioned earlier that we have a referral center. That's one of the things that I created, a new life referral center. That's going to be the beginning of where this uh, new life transformational center is going to go to uh, when I get the opportunity to build that or to buy an existing building uh, so that I can house people uh, that might have been homeless uh, or that are coming out of recovery. Give people the opportunity to get their life back and get back into society and become an asset because you know it's I'm, i just want to help people that give back to to the people that i was like i everybody has these seeds of greatness within them i believe this a hundred percent we have these seeds of greatness but we just have to nurture them yeah, we got to water them. We got to plant them in good soil. We got to trim them back when they get overgrown, get rid of the negative and the bad stuff and the dead branches, and then let them bloom into wonderful, mature plants. It took me a long time to get to the point where I am today. But like I mentioned earlier, I wouldn't take any of it back, not a single bit of it, only because. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't experienced it, right? So if you desire positive transformational change in your life, uh, we can help you. We can get you to the resources that you might need, whether that is clothing, whether it's, it's um, housing, um, assistance to pay bills and stuff like this. I have a tremendous amount of contacts, counseling, all kinds of stuff. Uh, all the way, you know, we can certainly, if you can afford it, I've got uh, providers there. If you can't afford it, we have providers there for you too, you see. That's the beautiful, beautiful part of that. So I do want to welcome everybody to the Town Hall Get to Know Show. Tonight, uh, we're talking about where do we go from here? I tell you where I'm going from here. I'm going to buy some property. I'm going to help a bunch of people. I'm going to help people realize that no matter what we've done in the past, it does not matter. We can overcome the obstacles we've faced and break through the barriers that used to hold us back to get ourselves to a point where we really enjoy life. And it is including surrounding yourself with people you want to be like. That's why I do these um, Get to Know broadcasts. Uh, we're going to be doing the Health and Wellness Wednesdays. We're going to be dealing with mind, body, and soul, the things that we can do to help ourselves. And then Fridays, we're going to be talking about you know, influencer stories and, and success stories. And then we've got the uh, Recovery 2.0. It's going to be great. It's going to be so awesome. So I do want to acknowledge several people that, that came in here. Robert Brooker, we love you. Thank you so very much. All the way from Toronto, Ontario. We love you, Robert. You're so awesome. And by the way, I came from Ontario, Canada originally. Uh, but been down in the States since like 1969. 
went to Southern California, maybe as you heard earlier in my message, uh, ended up here in Florida for the last 20 years. But this is where I love being. As a matter of fact, uh, the scene that you're seeing behind me, I'm not sitting on the beach. It's actually dark outside. The bottom line is, is that my good friend Edgar Hansen, some of you might know him. He is uh, the deck boss with the Northwestern on um, one of my favorite shows, Deadliest Catch. Needless to say, this is one of his properties that he has down on Inglewood Beach, and that's where that picture is. I love the beach. You know, we're here in Sarasota. We're uh, home of the number one beach, actually, in the, well, I'll call it the world. It's certainly the U.S., and it's in the top five in the world, and that is Siesta Key. I tell you, if you have never been here, and when things loosen up and you can travel again and stuff like that, hey, it's a wonderful place. Quartz Sand Beach, it's the most grounding beach that I've ever been at in my life. The quartz sand is like powder. It's a spiritual experience, literally. It's so great and fun. So, uh, Lori Whitney, hello and welcome. We certainly appreciate you. Uh, happy New Year's to, to Robert. You know, if you have a comment, you want to say something, um, feel free to put it in the comments. I'll go to a comment here by Robert. He says, I haven't been an early riser for the past few days, missing Jeffrey Gittemeyer's live at 9.59. I like to engage there. He's missing bathrobe moments. And I don't know if you've heard of bathrobe moments. That was great. I had Lauren Harris, Lauren Michael Harris, bathrobe moments on my show just recently. Uh, what a great guy. Know him from the next impactor. And I've met so many wonderful people. As a matter of fact, I just do want to shout out a couple people right here right now that is tamra hunter as a matter of fact that was a great party i don't know if you saw that she's with chemo buddies for life that is an organization because the lwn foundation not only wants to help homeless and people that are addicted to drugs and people that are suffering with mental health issues is is that we want to be able to get ourselves in a position to support other foundations like chemo buddies for life that are helping others they are all about connection. Uh, they're about family. They're about uh, overcoming the loneliness that one might uh, experience as a result of being diagnosed uh, with cancer. Awesome. Tamara, thanks for what you do. We certainly appreciate you. I love affiliating with people like that, with, uh, well, people that are making a positive impact. And I will simply do this. I'll tell you, that's what we're planning to do this year. Teach people how to be uh, as positive as they possibly can about their life. To, uh, well, learn how, if you're not coping well, learn how to cope better without things like I used to do, drugs and alcohol, because that's not a good coping mechanism. It doesn't work out real well. It might work for a minute, but it doesn't work out in the long run. And, and I just hate to pe see people suffer, you know, because I've been there. I've been diagnosed with the bipolar and and i say well no gosh darn wonder because i was so drunk most of the time you think i'm not going to go in and out of feeling totally insane and having mood swings everybody can have mood swings but uh, you know i'm going to go back to the it's a thinking thing everything starts with that thought so i had to do a lot of retraining it took a lot of work so uh welcome sauna She's coming all the way from the Philippines. That's so awesome. It's a, it's a worldwide. And thank you again, Facebook, for being able to even do that. I want to say hi to Leah. As a matter of fact, Leah is going to be joining us. Uh, she is a nurse practitioner. I know her personally. Wonderful person. She's been on our town hall, get to know. And she's going to be collaborating with us as well. And so she's going to be sharing her wisdom. We're looking forward to that. It's very exciting. Uh, Kimberly. Uh, my good friend right here, Sarasota, Florida, thank you for joining us. We certainly appreciate you. Um, Robert's going to be grateful as long as his iPad isn't underneath of his feet. Okay, so we're hoping that you didn't step on the iPad. All right. So it's been an interesting year. We have a brand new year ahead of us. We have the opportunity to be able to achieve our dreams and goals. And that's what we're going to be teaching here. We're going to be teaching about recovery. We're going to be teaching about people's success stories, as I mentioned. And I'll just go back because we've got some super powerhouse people like Lauren 
uh, Michael Harris that was with us the other day, what a success story he is. You know, his story too is, is that, you know, he, he spun out there with drugs and alcohol coping with that and he's overcome it and look at him now. Got his own show in his fifth season, empowering people. He's a great coach. <laughs> you know, we can do all kinds of great, great stuff. But boy, I'll remind you, it takes some work. It all starts with a desire, though. That's where it all starts is that desire. And then you take that desire to do what you want to do. And when you can apply the thing that you love doing the most and make that your job, it's no longer work anymore. You're just having fun, you know, and everybody has a role. It doesn't even matter what we do all the way to the guy that takes the trash out. We all play a part in the big picture and everybody is as valuable as the next person. That's what I had to learn. That was one of the hugest humbling experiences I had to experience was to think that I get rid of the thinking that I thought that I was better than somebody else tell you because for a long time i did i thought i was much better than oh i'm not that bad that's not oh huh, really well i was okay and i had to let go of that ego the ego was just eating me up and, and and so i had to let go of that ego actually get down to my true spiritual self and you know what we all are we're all made from love we are love. We're an expression of love. God loves us. I love you. You've got many friends that love you. And what I can say is this, no matter how dark the uh, life might seem to be, if we recognize that that experience is happening so that we can learn from it, then you have now the opportunity to put your desire into action, uh, create that intention, back it up with affirmations, back it up with a healthy lifestyle routine, and uh, go on to enjoy your life. Now, do this. Remember, it takes patience, okay? Because some of this stuff doesn't happen. Some things happen immediate. And remember I said have an open mind. Because sometimes when these things come back to us, they come back differently than we expected them. Oh, that's back to that expectations. I think I started talking about that, you know? And if it doesn't seem to meet our expectations, we're thinking, oh, that's not quite right. Well, guess what? It might be right. I don't want you to ever give up, okay? Th that's my message right now. Don't ever give up. If you give up on your dreams and your goals, it could be five minutes or maybe five days or it might even be five months or five years. But still, if you give up before you achieve your dreams and goals, that lack of faith will not allow you to achieve your dreams and goals. You've got to keep pushing. The most successful people, excuse me, <laughs> the most successful people that went on to become the, the top leaders of the world, people like Henry Ford, people like Andrew Carnegie, people like uh, Thomas Edison, and, and so many others. They failed over and over and over again, but they kept on going. They just kept on going until finally it happened. And it will happen, and that's where the patience is. So I don't want you to give up on your dreams and goals. Can it get difficult? Yes. Um, is there a lot of resources out there to be able to help you? Uh, yes, that's what I plan to be, is a resource. I'm one of many, one of so very many people. But we're all here to help you. Don't give up. Keep on pushing. Dust yourself off if you fall down. Because this is what my friend Steve said earlier today. And I've made a similar analogy, but I'll put it like this. Some people aren't willing to do it. Can you drag the horse to water? Yes. Can you make the horse drink the water? No. What happens to the horse? That is just He needs the water, but he won't drink it because he's going to be stubborn about it, and he doesn't, and that horse ends up dead on the trail. If it had drank the water and kept on going and just took some good advice, he'd still be here today, right? 
That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Don't give up. I believe in you. There is hope no matter how dark it is. Reach out. If you need to talk to somebody, reach out. Send us a message. Go to our website, www.lwnfoundation.org. Send us a message. Watch for the great things. Watch for Recovery 2.0 coming up. We're going to be going through uh, how to recover from all sorts of addictions. We're going to be helping you from a holistic standpoint. We want you to know that we love you. I appreciate everybody. Thank you, everybody that took time to come and watch this video. I hope that you have an exceptional new year. This is the opportunity to get creative, like Dr. Sophie says, creative thinking, optimize your creative mindset, put it into action, and you can create your world. Whatever you want, you can have it. God bless everybody. Let's have a great day. Happy New Year again. Welcome 2021. Let's have a great day. Let's have a great week. Well, it's a weekend. Okay. Take care. Thank you. I'll be back, right? I will be back. We're Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Monday morning, 7 a.m. Sunrise Daybreakers. I'll be back next Tuesday. We've got uh, Holly Anna next Friday. Super awesome. We're talking about making a positive impact in community. Let's get together. Do a random act of kindness today. Put a smile on somebody's face. All you have to do is smile and say hi. Have a great day. Bless you. We'll see you soon. Thank you very much. This is Stephen Smith. I'll be signing off from Sarasota, Florida. And we'll see you again very, very soon.